Okay, so uh, test-driven development, basically, what is it? Um, the, the main point of it is that it's not just uh, development with testing. Um, it's not just uh, kind of adding tests at the end of your project or something to, to uh, uh, give, it, give it a test suite after you've uh, finished writing all the code. That's not what it is. It's uh, a whole new approach to coding where the tests actually take on even more importance than the production code. Uh, a lot of people say that um, when doing test-driven development, um, their projects, if they had to choose to throw away the production code or to throw away the test suite, they'd rather throw away the production code. Because the test suite actually kind of describes what the production code does. Um, it's a good indicator of like, what the classes in your project do. You can, work, you can kind of work out from that. You can build back your production class, uh, classes. Not that you're ever going to have to throw away anything. But that shows the kind of importance of what tests should be in a project. Um, so test driven development, it's where the tests are written first and then the code uh, that fills in those tests is written to make those tests pass. Or in the words of uh, Wikipedia, uh, first the developer writes a failing automated test case that defines a desired improvement or new function, then produces code to pass that test and finally refactors the code uh, to acceptable standards. So, um, how does it differ from how we've always worked? Well, there are kind of there are three uh, three main ways of development. Um, there's the kind of traditional. Um, then there's the um, development with testing, but not TDD. And then there's TDD. Uh, so traditional, let's say, we'll go through the motions of someone uh, making a change to a project. Uh, first of all, there would uh, dev makes a change to code. Uh, because of a new feature or something, or maybe a bug fix, or refactor, or something like that. Then... Load, load the web app in browser, and uh, basically just kind of visually check that it's all working. Um, that can really vary in uh, quality. I mean, you may just kind of quickly load up that page. Yeah, it's working. Sign it off, or it may be kind of okay. Well, that might have affected something else. So let's click through a few pages, see what's see what's happened. But in the end, it's just a visual verification. Um, and so yeah, they confirm whether it works. Then upload to version control. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, and then it's basically just forgotten. And then, so basically the problem, well, I think we can all kind of see problems with it because we've all experienced it. But the problems are, well, testing can never really be thorough because so many bugs, in fact, the, the reason that we don't spot bugs is often because they don't have a visual uh, impact when you first load it, or different data sets that you are handling with different conditions mean that they only surface in particular particular times. So it can never really be thorough if you're just checking through, because you, you don't really want to manually, oh, well, let's try it in this situation, let's try it in that situation. That just gets too tiresome, especially if you're making constant changes to, for instance, PDF generation. <laughs> there are just so many variables that it's, it's boring to do it too many times. Um, also, the new code will probably never be touched again until a bug arises. Um, what if it's broken something else? That's also another really common situation that something that you think is harmless has introduced bugs elsewhere in the, in the system. And it's uh, just not feasible to check a wide range of situations when you're doing it visually. So uh, that's basically bad. Uh, and then testing uh, with not using TDD. So, for instance, um, let's go through it. Definitely change. And um, dev or someone else, uh, which some people do actually um, have testers in their companies, and they're, they're the ones who actually test the code, not the devs. Uh, or someone else. And 
and uh, so they'll test, uh, they'll write a test that checks the code in various different circumstances, different contexts. Um, test pass. Upload to, the, uh, to version control. And then if you've got continuous integration, then that gets basically integrated as a new build. So obviously this approach is a lot better because you've got some sort of testing in place. Um, but the problem is that if you write the tests after you've written the code, there's a danger of them being skipped. Especially if um, like time is tight, if deadlines are looming, tests are going to be the first thing to go. Because you've written the code, you, you revert back to this, you check that it works, it works, okay, we've got no time to write tests, let's just upload it. And if tests are neglected, then the whole test suite eventually comes useless because you run it, it breaks, you think, well, yeah, it's because I haven't had time to write these new tests or these other things that I know about, I, I just can't be able to deal with it now. Eventually, it gets run less and less until it's completely archaic and there's, there's no point having a test suite if you don't keep, keep it in exact sync with the production code. In fact, slightly further on in the production code, if anything. 